Okay guys, so I want to make a quick video on using a flush trim bit on plywood or any kind of countertop and you need to trim something flush. Just because it's a lot easier when you're working with something like this, like I made these custom pie lashes, these are going to go against the wall and you can see here uh, the bottom of the column is beefed up and this is going to be trimmed out with some uh, solid wood banding around that to create the effect of the separation. There'll be crown molding at the top and this is going to go against the wall and in the front of that basement I'm working on with the movie theater area. That's going to be all set up with two on each side of where the movie screen is going to go and in between that there's going to be some trim molding as well. But it was just a lot easier to oversize. I'm going to show you the back of this here in a second. To get this to sit perfectly flush on the front because this mitered uh, folded column on the bottom is um, I left it just a little bit long because to get this perfect and have it sit exactly flush on the back, the odds of that happening are slim to none. So I'm just going to show you an easy way to do it so that you get perfect results every time. All right, let's come around the back and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, I'll show you the overhang and I'll show you the bit that I'm going to use. Okay, you can see here I marked all the boards. That's number two. And this is the mitered uh, piece that's going to go around the bottom. And you can see here I have it up on spacer blocks. And the reason is because this piece is built longer it's going to protrude down a little bit and I don't want that contacting the bench. So I gave myself a little bit of play here. You don't need any glue for this because it's going to be screwed in from the inside and the fit is snug enough that it will stay in place. Just going to open that up a little bit at the end. And just give it a little bit of a little wiggle there. Now I'm just going to slide this on. I'm going to make sure that I flush up the bottom here. Okay, so this is now the back of the column. So this is all going to go flush against the wall. And you can see here, this is all one size all the way down. This is the, the actual first part of the column that I made. Now this part here is the beefed up bottom that wraps around with the miter fold. Now, like I said, it's much easier to leave yourself a little bit of an overhang. And that's what I did right here. And you can see, um, I just put the screws internally over here so that I didn't have to fill any of the nail holes from the other side. Just makes a nice, clean, finished look. It's less work for me to do. So, I'm going to be using this flush trim router bit. This is a Freud bit. I'll link it in the description, but you can get these at your local box stores. And we're going to be using this with the router. And this bearing here is going to ride right along this bottom edge. So this is a bottom mounted bearing flush trim bit. And what it'll do is as it rides along here, it will cut into the plywood here. And I'm going to do a rough pass on a back cut, nice and slow, to take off some of the material. This way we're not taking a big bite out at one shot, because that could bog the router down and it also could burn out the bit and it could give you some, uh, some pretty mean tear out here. You want to avoid that. So once this rides along the bottom here, it's, you can see that it's wider than the 18 millimeter plywood itself and the purpose of that is to cut this in one pass without having to readjust the bit. So what we'll do is we'll install this in the router right now and then we'll adjust the depth and then we'll make our pass and I'll show you how clean this can be and the way it's going to come out perfectly flush. I'm going to install the bit up to this line here. You probably can't see it on the camera because it's you know, this is an older bit and it's, it's starting to fade away over here, but it's, there's a little line that's etched in the bit and that's where you want to chuck that up to in your router collet. So I'm just going to chuck it up right there and then I'm going to start to tighten it by hand. And what I love about this Festool router here is that it has a ratcheting button so you don't need two wrenches and do that a uh, little bit of a knuckle buster that always happens. You can just snug it in. All right, now you don't have to over tighten it. What I'm going to do is set the depth and I'm going to install this chip catcher. That's going to uh, help me to catch the majority of the dust for the dust collection on this. So uh, let's get this set up now with the depth. It's very easy to do. Okay, so I got you in just about as close as I can get without it uh, blurring out and you can see the operation of how this is going to work. So the base of the router is going to rest on top of this piece of the plywood that's going to be trimmed. Now I want the, bo the bottom of the bearing I want that to contact somewhere in the middle of the plywood. So I'm going to make sure that my base is straight. I'm going to bring the depth down just until I see that the bearing is contacting the plywood right in the, about the center and the blade and a majority of the blade anyway is cutting all of the plywood that needs to be cut. 
So I'm just gonna raise it up slightly right about there, and then I'm gonna tighten it down. And now I have my depth setting. So if, if it makes you feel more comfortable, if you think that you might lose that setting, all you have to do is set your turret and then drop down your depth gauge. Make sure it's contacting, tighten it up. And now you know that even if you were to loosen the router and come up, then you can just plunge it back down, lock it in place, and then you can see that the router is exactly where you left it off and you wanna be cutting. So that's perfect. All right, so let's set up the dust collection and get ready to route this thing. Okay, so I think this is the best angle that I can get you where you can see how I'm gonna first take um, a pass with uh, a climb cut, which is the reverse direction that you wanna be routing. But as long as you take a light pass and you're not plunging in or pushing into the workpiece and just let the router bit do its work, you're gonna just take off enough material that it's gonna get it down closer to where you need to be. This way you're not taking off a big bite at one time and getting a lot of tear out. So remember for uh, this, you're gonna be definitely using hearing protection and eye protection. And you want your router bit, uh, because this is a smaller diameter bit, you want your router speed to be at the full speed for this. And just gonna take a nice light pass. I'm gonna make sure that I keep both hands on the router at all times. I'm gonna make sure that that's not in my way for the dust catcher. And Okay guys, so now I got the camera off the tripod just so that I can give you a close up. So this is what it looked like before we started the flush trim process. And now this is it here. And you can see if I can get the camera to focus perfectly like this, then you can see just how perfect this is. Perfectly flush. There's no variation. If you look straight down, straight down the board, you can see these two pieces are completely flush with each other. As a matter of fact, I have my square right here. I can just grab that, put it up against there, and you can see you can see how perfect that is. There's no light coming through there at all, which means that the pieces are dead flush. There's no, no space in between. And so now I just need to flip it over and do the other side. Now you can see how these columns are gonna be flush against the wall, so there's no variation anymore. And these suckers are pretty heavy. And this is how it's gonna sit, just like that. Okay, so uh, these pilasters are just about eight feet tall. The bottom here comes up a third of the way of the pilaster. So that's gonna give it that nice effect of cutting the, the wall down into thirds. Like I said, there's gonna be a solid wood uh, piece of maybe maybe 35 millimeters of edge banding, solid uh, oak coming around and mitered at the corners. That will separate these two pieces. And I'm not sure, but the client may want some uh, half round, three half round moldings on the inside there, but these are gonna be uh, stained black and finished with the General Finishes High Performance Satin Top Coat. That'll be sprayed. So what I'm gonna do is get all these columns done and then I'm going to stain everything. And then the top is gonna to have the same crown molding that I used on the ceiling. These are going in the room with that same coffered ceiling. If you've seen the box beam or coffered ceiling that I just did in this movie theater area, it's the same. Uh, client that I did the bar for now. I'm doing the movie theater area So basically I thought it would be better to do these little uh, snippets of videos here like this You know showcasing uh, some some of the tools and techniques and things like that to help you uh, 
build better in the long run. But by doing small techniques like this and showing you how I get to the point from A to B to finish things and get this to sit flush against the wall, uh, you know, that could save you some time because you may try to do something like this and then you're going to try to get it perfect and if you cut it just a little bit too short, then you're in trouble because now you just wasted a lot of material and a lot of time. Alright guys, so I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that little picture of a notification bell. That will notify you every time I upload a new video, which is uh, pretty often these days. And also, don't forget to check the description box below for a list of the tools that I use and my affiliate links for those tools. That just helps out the channel a little bit because they give me a small little commission for those tools that you purchase through there, which you're not going to pay any more for. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.